Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. You know what else helps? Tell your friends about it. Spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. This episode is the last episode of a nine-part series of Uruguayan wine. Uh, these are all free samples, so I have total autonomy in these reviews. Be sure to watch the first episode of the series for a more in-depth feature on Uruguayan wine. The short version is that wine has certainly been made in Uruguay since the early 1600s. However, it's not until about 1870 that the modern wine industry really begins in Uruguay. Today's wine is actually a vermouth. It's from Basta Spirit. So what is a vermouth and why is it considered a wine? Well, it starts off as a wine, but not a fully fermented wine. It's what we call a fortified aromatized wine. Sometimes people drop the fortified part, but it is fortified. Once the amount of fermentation has happened, the wine may, might be aged or not before the botanicals are added. Either way, neutral grape spirit, also known as brandy, is added to the wine at this point to get the alcohol to somewhere between 16 to 18% ABV. You can use other spirits, but brandy is the most likely. Next, this is added to large tanks with various dried ingredients, such as herbs, seeds, spices, roots, barks, flowers, etc. already in them. I'll call these botanicals for short. Things are mixed until the botanicals have been absorbed and everything is ready for bottling. You can have white, red, rosé as far as color. Red vermouth gets its color from having red wine added or from the ingredients used for flavoring. Rosé is usually made by combining the red and white wines. This is the first experience with a rosé vermouth for me. I can't remember ever seeing one. Besides the color, you can have sweet and dry. In my experience, dry has always been white and sweet has always been red. It's certainly possible to flip that around. Dry is still kind of sweet as it'll be close to 40 grams per liter of sugar. Sweet is definitely sweet, ranging from 100 to 150 grams per liter. A sugar syrup is usually added to the, not usually, a sugar syrup is added to make the, the sweet version sweet. As far as this one, I don't know its dryness level. Way back in the day, vermouth was used as a tonic, but now it's been used as a drink in, since the 1800s and it's become a, an ingredient in cocktails. The base wine is made from Tanat at the Maracal Winery in Canelones. The family has been growing grapes for over 100 years and making wine for over 80. The founders are Isabellino Maracal and Juana Lugano from the Canary Islands in Italy, respectively. They settled in the Echevadia part of Canelones. Shortly after having four children, Isabellino passed away and his wife and her young children started the winery in order to have a better time selling the fruits of their labor. The winery was founded in 1938. Alejandro and Juan Andres Maracal are now the fourth generation running the winery. They're both trained winemakers too. Juan Andres, known as the winemaker, partnered up with Alvaro Aniano, the bartender, and Salvador Baquero, aka the communicator, to form Basta Spirit, the maker of this vermouth. In my research, Alvaro really is a bartender, having worked in bars in Europe, Central America, and South America. Salvador is in the business of communicating, funny enough, having been a radio and television host in addition to publishing tech and philosophy works. The vermouth goes through a very short maceration to extract the color. The vines are about 20 years old. They employ hand harvesting in the vineyard. Besides Tanat, they also grow Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Semillon, and Sauvignon Blanc. Now let's get the stats for the vermouth. The Basta Spirit Vermouth Flores Rosé suggested retail price is $16. 100% Tanat from the Bodega Marical in Canelones is hand harvested. They add 27 botanicals, including four flowers, being elderflower, hops, chamomile, and rose. And rose. The ABV is 16%. All right, let's get into this vermouth. Now, um, part of the webinar that I, I did, uh, almost every winery had some type of uh, video. And during the webinar, it was kind of hard to really, um, the, the, you know, the videos were uh, 
not always like smooth, but we always, but you could download each of the videos you wanted to. On this one, I downloaded it because I really wanted to get as much information as possible. Um, and they did say that this is less sweet than I guess what you're, than what you would normally expect. So they don't have an RS on this, but I would imagine this is going to be closer to a dry vermouth and it could even be drier than a dry vermouth, but we'll check it out. So vermouth is not something I drink very often. So this is a, a super treat for me. Now, normally you wouldn't just drink it like this. Uh, if you're going to drink vermouth on its own, you would normally drink it like on ice or something like that. Uh, or you make, you can make like the equivalent of an Aperol spritz with this, right? You could pull club soda or even just soda in with this. Um, so it's not that you can't drink vermouth on its own. It's just that typically it's going to be part of something else. All right. So definitely have a wine with botanicals. Okay. Wow. Okay. I am not even going to try to identify all 27 of them, but, and here's another thing. A lot of times, a lot of times when they say this X number of botanicals, so vermouths or like other, other, um, liqueurs and things like that, that, that have these, um, these, all these like ingredients that they're gonna put in there. They usually keep it a secret. Uh, they'll tell you a couple of them, but they won't tell you all of them. And like I said, they only told you the four flowers because I mean, it's called Flores for a reason, but I kind of felt like I got the chamomile <laughs> on that. Um, I kind of feel like you do get the elderflower. Um, far as hops, kind of, sort of the rose, I almost said rosé. The rose, nah, maybe not. But I do feel like I get some roots and bark, you know, some some other like earthiness out of it. There's also like a strawberry component, a uh, raspberry component to it. There's a bitterness to it. So like, you know, like some type of bitter root. Um, it could be it could be something as much you know, as wormwood, that type of thing. It could be um um uh, which which we'll call it that you use in in um, um, tonic water um, quinine could be in this let's check it out so there is there is a noticeable sweetness to it but it's balancing the bitterness and I think that's really why even though it's a even though vermouths are dry they're so bitter because in general I don't really ever drink vermouth on its own but I guess because of their bitterness You've got to put that sugar in there um, to, to really, uh, or it's got to be in there naturally if it's a dry vermouth to counter that bitterness. So yeah, you're getting that that sweet and bitter. And the bitter's kind of winning on this. But yeah, it's like, I really feel like it's like there's like some quinine or some wormwood. Like there is that kind of absinthe-ish bitterness, but not, not licorice, not anise. Um, but you get that kind of bitterness like you get from a tonic water. Um, I feel like I'm getting three of the, well, at least two of the four flowers, you know, the, the chamomile and the elderflower coming through. I feel like there's the strawberry still coming through. Um, I feel like there's definitely, you know, herbs, like an herbs of Provence type of thing happening. Um, I feel like I am like biting into like branches and, 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 you know, bark. <laughs> I really feel like I'm biting into that. Oh, a little bit of like lemon pith, lemon zest. Yeah. A little orange peel. There are lots of layers coming through here. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like things just kind of rising to the top real quick and going, Poo -poo, and then like, then it like vanishes and then something else comes up. How's that again? Poo -poo. Um, so there's lots of stuff going on with this thing. I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to try to list all 27 of them. It's tasty. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I got to try like legit vermouth, like other than just like your martini and Rossi dry and, you know, sweet, um, or Dolan, which nothing wrong with those. I mean, Dolan as far as French vermouth is like kind of the standard and the Martini and Rossi from Italy is kind of the standard too. Uh, at least what you're going to find at most bars. Um, it's interesting. 
I'm going to, I'm going to like enjoy trying to find, you know, trying to have some of this maybe just on ice. Um, I guess I'll have to invest in some club soda because I don't have any club soda at the house um, and give it a try. Uh, I do have about three months <laughs> before I really need to make sure I uh, finish this off. Um, so yeah, that's the last wine of the night. You know what? Here's another thing. I really don't notice the, the alcohol at 16%. I feel like some of the other wines I've had earlier today was higher in alcohol. That's one reason why I swallowed it. I want to see, is there a burn there? It's a little bit right now. It took, it took a minute, but it still doesn't feel like it's a high alcohol wine. I think if you had this, like, well, granted if you have club soda, you're diluting it. So it's, it's not going to hit you as hard. But if you just like put it on the rocks, again, it's you know the rock, you know the ice is going to melt. But yeah, you could totally like sip on this, and before you know it, you're hammered. Um, yeah, yeah, lots of orange is very much like it's very much like apérol in, in a way, but it's the orange peel, not the orange, not the orange itself. Tangerine. Um, yeah. It's tasty. Hey, if you see this in the market, I'd give it a shot if you're if you're interested in trying some vermouth. Uh, whether you want to drink it on its own, or you want to change up like a weird like a weird martini, use this instead of your normal vermouths in there. Yeah, give it a shot. Oh, they do say I think on the website, I think on the back label too, they say have it with olives. Does it say on here? No, but but I know the I know the um yeah no right there where is it no I didn't say it but. I think it's on the website, on the text sheet, it says something about have it with olives. And I could see that because the salinity of the olives and that, that bitterness, especially green olives, it would go well. Marcona almonds. Yeah. Yeah, put it as part of a charcuterie. A little, 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 uh, little, epiter, little, little starter, if you will. All right, that's going to do it for today's show. Uh, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, please make sure you uh, like and subscribe. And then tell your friends about the best wine show anywhere. We'll see you next time.